What you're about to see and hear exists in reality in Jamaica and has become one of the many unfortunate chapters. The departure from course during this period of industrialization and industrial development was not due to external forces. It was due to the misadventure of the PNP, which diverted us from the path of economic growth, selling the people of Jamaica false hope and unrealistic dreams for which the country is still paying today. When the devil comes, he come at you with one of those three. And if you ain't true to what you claim you about, you're going to fall victim. I'm sorry for you brothers that's going through it. To your own self, you got to be true. Is this how you want to teach your sons when they come up? Michael Manley, more than anyone else since Marcus Mazagabi, must be credited for raising the political consciousness of the Jamaican people and motivating them to political action. He was a man who refused to accept things as they were and was unapologetic in his pursuit of change. His concern for the welfare of Jamaica led him to an appreciation of the intricate international economic and political relationships and the way in which they impacted on Jamaica's fortunes. His untiring efforts to change those relationships earned him international recognition and made his an authoritative voice in important councils around the globe. The departure from course during this period of industrialization and industrial development was not due to external forces. It was due to the misadventure of the PNP. We had to have learned something from those who went before us who did all of this. After accepting loans and conditionalities from the World Bank, lost its largest cash crop markets due to competition with Western imports. Today, countless farmers are out of work, for they are unable to compete with the large corporations. Greetings, Massive. Wagwan, Jamaica. Towards the end of the 1960s, when Jamaica was amongst the fastest growing economies in the world, we received what was up until that point the largest loan to a developing country granted by the World Bank, and we received that loan for educational purposes, to build schools and institutions that would have been able to receive the influx of young people seeking an educational opportunity in the years after independence. The loan did not achieve its purpose as intended. There were immense cost overruns, 100%, which contributed to the beginnings of our debt and which had we not had those overruns, we could have built 50 more schools. Reason? Partisan political award of contracts, not on the basis of merit, not on the basis of competence, but on the basis of party connection. And of course, the contractors gave back to the politicians, to the party, kickbacks in appreciation for this political corrupt behavior. Jamaica suffered then, and we continue to suffer now from this political corruption that we need to bring to an end. After five decades of independence, a lot of Jamaicans have begun to have doubts as to whether independence is a good thing. And when you look at the problems that Jamaica face, you can trace many of them to a weak or a non-performing education and training system. The government of the day called in Dr. Arthur Burt. He made one very, very important change to the method of hiring contractors. And that was whereas before, there was an established panel of contractors certified who members of parliament could recommend from. But a panel at the Ministry of Education would have the final say in choosing. That was changed to allow each member of parliament to recommend the contractors who would build the schools in their constituencies. The program 
lasted not three years, but six. And more importantly, the overrun on the primary school building program was 125%. And the overrun on the secondary school program, 100%. Which means for the money spent, so the, the Jamaican taxpayer should have had twice as many schools. A new administration took government in 1972. And looking at the school building program and what had gone on, there was a big hue and cry for an investigation. In response to that hue and cry, a commission of inquiry was set up under which came to be known as the Da Costa Commission. Now, the findings of the Da Costa Commission should be read by every Jamaican. And the objective is not so much to remind the population of where guilt or blame is, but to try to make sure that this process is never, and these mistakes are never, ever repeated. <laughs>